people, welcome back to Politics Watch, this is Serpy. Now, today I'm going to list Jamaica's top 5 most destructive and deadliest gangs, and that is in our nation's history. Now, before um, I go into this video, let me just add a disclaimer. Number 1, this is my opinion, right? So, I don't want anybody to message me or tell me, say, oh, if you do this, or if you say that, this is my opinion, right? If you don't know how opinions work, well, that's your problem, right? This is just what I have noticed. This is what, um, this is the conclusion I have come to from years and years of studying, living amongst, uh, dealing with some of these organizations, right? Knowing people who were in them, knowing people who had their lives taken by them. So again, this is just my conclusion, right? So next thing I want to add, second disclaimer. Because I know Jamaica is a very highly acidic society. A place where people brag that their community have the most killers and wreak the most havoc in society. A place where people are proud to tell you that where them come from is responsible for 100, 200, 300 murders. Right? So, because I know those people exist, let me just tell you this right now. If you don't see your local neighborhood gangs on this list, deal with it. Go make your own video. Right? Again, this is my opinion, right? There are a lot of gangs in Jamaica. Yes, I know Rima man, I know much man on the kill. Yes, jungle man, I know what to do over your sound. You shoot over your sound. Yes, more of you man, I know so I have 10,000 rifles over there and 1 million tons of ammunition. Yeah, 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 whatever. This is my list, right? And again, I'm forming the list from years of seeing, experiencing, and studying this kind of thing. So, with that said, let me go into the video. Kicking off the list, we have a tie between the Ratbat Gang, which primarily operates from out of the Maxfield side, and one other from over Spanish Town. Right now, Ratbat. Ratbat has been around since Wapi Kill Philo. Right, people, Ratbat hasn't really been in the mainstream lately. Um, it seems like the gang has become very disorganized. A lot of their, 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 their big money financiers drop out. Um, probably their most, uh, one of their most known done was a man by the name of Machine Man. Right, again, the man they also drop out like most dons usually end up. Right, you know, for them things already. Here today, gone tomorrow. Right, but Machine Man, in my opinion, is probably the most, the, the name most people associate with Ratbat. Now, Ratbat, Maxfield Avenue, yes, I know people are going to come down in the comment section and tell me how much people then the dash when in the 90s and the late, um, the, the early 2000s, and how oh, Ratbat is running off over here, so, and yes, you know, Ratbat is dangerous, right? But nowadays, it doesn't seem like the gang is as um, organized as they used to. Uh, they, they look like them all over the place, to be honest. But growing up, I just remember Ratbat was the name. That name was that that that, that name had a lot of meaning to a lot of people when I was growing up. I know a lot of young people now probably don't even remember or hear about Ratbat. But growing up, when I was going to school, coming from school, Ratbat was one of the names them where trust me, people never really like take no check. You may remember one time the farmer era leader known as Radigan the drop out. There were a lot of fears that big problems were going on because um, the police were saying that Radigan was one of the done them for Ratbat, but of course Radigan family came out and said, Oh, Radigan have nothing to do with Ratbat and he was a law abiding citizen and you know he healed the sick and raised the dead. You know, usual story. Right, but people, Ratbat, number five. The other gang at number five with Ratbat, as I said as I said is a tie, is one other from over Spanish town. Now one other, which is the the I guess you could say the JLP um, armed wing for Spanish Town. Uh, they are aligned to the Jamaica Labour Party. The most known dons for one other would probably be, well, would definitely be Oliver Booba Smith. Um, and the second one is Andrew Bonman Hope. Now, what is extraordinary is that both of these men passed away. Both of these men were killed in cars that were registered in the name of a very senior politician in the JLP, none other than Olivia Bobsy Grange. Both of them, Booba and Bonman, right? I don't know, I mean, the odds of that happening are extraordinary. 
And of course, we know Jamaican politics already. Even when this information came to light, it did not have any impact on Bob DeGrange's career. As a matter of fact, Bob DeGrange has gone on to be even stronger. She's the current minister in the government. But we don't know politics when we're at Jamaica already. If that were certain countries, that politician would have to resign immediately. But then again, we already know Jamaica is not a real place. Um, Bonman, which was the last, you could say probably the, re, the last big done for one other. When he died, originally people were saying it was police. To this day, a lot of people are saying police kill him. Uh, people, police did not kill Bonman. Bonman was killed by Klansman. Right? Klansman, man, them dress up in a school uniform and go kill Bonman. As a matter of fact, people, if you don't want to hear story, if you don't want to hear, do a video on how Bonman lose him life and how it was actually Klansman who killed him, do, go in the comment section and tell me, say, yo, do it, sir, P. Right? So, people, that is one other. So that's number five. Rap bat and one other tied for number five most destructive gangs in Jamaican history. Oh, and by the way, people, the person you're looking at on your screen right now, that's Bonman, Andrew Bonman Hope. That's just for in case people don't know what him what he actually looked like. So people, that's Bonman on your screen right now. So let's move into number four. Now this is an organization that I've said many times before should not even be classified as a gang because based on some of the acts that they've carried out they need to be classified like some of them groups that are from over the Middle East right of course I'm talking about Klansman now people understand this number four and number three are interchangeable right remember I told you this is my opinion number four and number three are interchangeable that means say you can put four or three and three or four if you want right number two number two and number one in my opinion are there's no dispute but number four and number three in this list you can interchange them number four clansman of course you know about the big dan name for them bulby and the more recent than tesha miller or well I guess you could say Tesha Miller and Blackman because they, they eventually started to squabble over leadership. But there are many other senior figures inside the Klansman organization, past and present. You have to talk about people like your your Dave Clans and your Fox and them all the time and them, right? But people understand this. Clansman. People normally talk about one other and clansman like their equals. Now again, me know Jamaica stay. People are get offended. People are get hurt. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, this, me gang, yeah, this, me ends. Listen, dry your eyes. I'm just being honest right now. In my opinion, clansmen and one other were never equals. People always make it sound like one other and clans were like going two to two and they were evenly matched. People, one other was a gang. As I said, clansmen should be classified in the same category as some of those organizations down there in the Middle East, right? Don't, Klansman was not a gang. It was far worse than that, right? One other was never as brutal and as savage as Klansman, right? Klansman produced some of the most ruthless youths Jamaica has ever seen. I don't know what them have in them water. I don't know what them sprinkling of them food. But somehow, those youths grew up to become a different level of brutal. I'm talking about youths like Roderick um, or Sharkman or Mad Dog, as his, his, his bridging the, the World Shepherd call him. By the way, that's the youth who dismembered Clive Lizard Williams, right? He was also well known for being a, a surgeon and he never gone to medical school, right? That's another thing, people. Clansman had a lot of surgeons in night. Whole heap of surgeons and me never see them go up a UE. Or do not go do no medical course yet, right? Youths like Satan, JJ Nakis, um, Nevada Hajis, aka DJ, right? People, all kind of madman in our clans, all kind of madman, right? I don't know where them youth come from, but as I said, in my opinion, they were never, they were never equals with one another. Clansman was far worse. I don't know if there was some kind of agenda for you, like, oh, look, but. Because you know, Klansman linked to PNP 
and one other a jlp and so the different supporters say yeah but you have one other and you have clans um in my opinion when you talk about being brutal and the numbers and the amount of people them them do this and do that to one that's how big they were in my opinion clansmen and, and one other were never equals clansman was far more ruthless far more grimy far more savage i, I don't even know some of the things that clansmen they don't even make sense as a matter of fact clansmen became so big that really and truly clansmen destroyed itself the, I don't think the police can take the, the, the accolades for helping to cause Klansmen, of course they exist but they're not as organized and, and as strong as they used to be. Because as I say, a lot of the, the senior members, a lot of the high profile, the high profile 87s them gone now. Right, I say DJ, JJ and them, you no for them gone now. Right, black man they behind bars, Tisha they behind bars, um, World Shepherd they behind bars. Right, so people, of course, they've taken a hit but this was an organization that literally in my opinion self-destruct clansmen have killed more clansmen than police kill clansmen clansmen kill more clansmen than one other kill clansmen this is one of the reasons why i tell you the whole one other clansman being equally matched and going toe to toe in my opinion that was never true majority of the youth them in a clansman who lose them life died from other uh, died as a result of other clansmen either directly or indirectly when mr directly i mean obviously one clansman go shoot the next one or go this name by the next one when mr indirectly we mean say clansman call police and make police go shoot that clansman because that was something they were notorious for especially the leadership in a clansman anytime them fed up with a look at 87 or them use him for a specific mission and he was no longer useful Clansman leadership, Tesha Miller them, yes, Tesha Miller, right, would, and other leaders, in, uh, uh, Tesha Miller they done obviously, but enough, you have like a leader's leaders, the man they would call police and tell the police them where them owner 87 is there for police to kill them, right, I know some people might not know this happened, but yes, police done are informer too, right, when people talk about informer, remember my old video where I said, um, 87s and, and 90s and bad man are the biggest in pharma. yes even your Dan even the Dan's are in farmers right because soon as I'm fed up with you then just call police and make police communicate wrong I'm a matter of fact even Bolby Bolby used to do that and he's a, he's a very senior police officer who Jamaicans love big up and talk about him a crime fighter and if you get commissioner right who was also one of Bolby's stooges right where anytime one of the 87s them step out of line or him want uh, him send him on a specific mission to call somebody high profile and then you want you obviously you don't want that person to hang around because then get catch them might talk then you just send the police to kill him right afterwards right so directly and indirectly more clansmen died from other clansmen than police and one other right one other at no point was one other ever flushing out no hundreds of clansmen that's that that's not the case and by the time it got down to the tesha miller and black man war that's when they really started to exterminate it, each other. By that point, one other just stepped on the bench. One other just stepped on the bench and clansmen over there tear themselves to pieces. Right? So people, number four on the list from out of Spanish stone. One other. Um, the reason why I said number four and number three are interchangeable is because what tipped number three over um, clans, the gang, the, the gang I'm going to talk about next, what gave them the edge for me come down to money people clansman was full of broke pocket bad man clans even the one them have the most name in the streets and have much dopey on them and people afraid of them and people clansman was full of broke pocket 87s hungry like mongrel dog no for them no for them hungry and not how much them have more gun than money them pocket clansman was well known for that the money in the clans all the big extortion money and everything in the clans was mostly circulating at the top right that is why that is why one of the strategies of black man used to get out tesha was to bribe the 87 them because he used to tell them say oh listen tesha only i give you five grand and me give you 10 15 20 right so that is why enough man switched on tesha because clansman did full when we say full full of broke pocket hungry belly 87s don't get me wrong they come for you and fling your hand over your ass and fling your foot over your ass by the next morning come 
them belly start roll. Hungry like dog. Right? Hungry like some of them puppy the way you sit on the, 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 the JSPCA or Montego be animal even. Right? Serious thing people. Man them broke like dog. Right? So what gave number three the edge for me was number three eighty seven them. Even the lowest eighty seven, right? Had more money and strength than the clansman them. As ruthless as they wanna be. So number four, clansman. Number three, stone crusher. From out of St. James. Yes, people. You, you 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 know you know it was coming. You know Stone Crusher had to be on this list. Right? Now what clansman did to St. Catherine and Linstead and Portmore and the environs around it is what Stone Crusher did to St. James and the parishes around it. Right? Stone Crusher in, in when when you talk about rifle, I've said it many times. In my opinion, Moby among them, Stone Crusher among them, have the most rifle in a Jamaica. Right? This might not be specific for Stone Crusher, you can be other side say Moby as well. But people, when you talk about rifle, Stone Crusher among them have them. Because them have the links with the Haitians them. And by the time they start get the scamming money, by the time they start get the link them place go across on the boat. Because people as me say Moby man them, Stone Crusher man them are regular them go chill out of Haiti. Right? Be links them over there. By the time they come back to Jamaica, be a rifle. Rifle from top of rifle. People remember say Moby a man them. Right? Multiple times Moby a man them. Shoot up JDF helicopter. Right? When the big thing they go on at Canterbury, man them shoot down helicopter. Moby a man them full of rifle people. Stone Crusher and Clansman, again, they're also known for the whole um, surgeon thing and then they're going to medical school. Right? If you talk about youths like bigger crime, again, he was one of those surgeons and stone crusher. I mean, there's no certificate on him all. If you say him not enough to do surgery, right? But there are a few prominent members. Um, of course, you probably heard of Michael Lassie Forbes, right? You probably heard of Dan, uh, Richie Blocks, and then on the um, Doggy. Of course, remember I did the video on Doggy. So, uh, I'm not trying to say that one is necessarily more ruthless than the other because when you look at the, the, the numbers and, and, and the bodies that they've destroyed over the years, Clansman and Stone Crusher, it's extra, they had an extraordinary murder rate, people. An extraordinary murder rate. But what gave Stan, Stone Crusher the edge for me was that in a Stone Crusher, the look 87s them, they have a bag of money, which was not common in a clans. In a clans, only top man them have money. In a Stone Crusher, even the look regular 87s them, through them have the scamming link and then can make the bag of money down there, right? Even the little regular 87s could have bring in a uh, four or five rifle for himself, right? And a driver, uh, an axio, and them thing there. That's that name as Clansman. Clansman man, them, the little 87s, them, the most they might have is a little bike, right? But Stone Crusher, the regular man, them could have get money and go buy them own weapons and farm even them own little click. That's why if you notice, Montego Bay, there's so many little smaller splinter gangs in a Montego Bay. Right, because the other man, he, he might originally he might be Stone Crusher or originally he might be Piranha, but if he make film look money, he must bring in film owner, he must buy film owner 30 rifle and farm film owner look thing. That is one thing about Moby, they have money. They look, 87 them have money in their pocket. So that is why I give them the, the edge for being more destructive because they can, the minor people, money play a huge role in how destructive a gang is you now. Because a money make you buy rifle, money make you buy a shot, right? Money make you can fight a war for a long period of time, etc. Money make you can bail yourself, come back around, come shoot people again. Stone crusher man them, mobile man them, they have more money than the look 87s them in our clans. That is why I give Stone Crusher the edge over clansman. But again, this is interchangeable. We're talking about two of the most brutal, savage and barbaric gangs in Jamaican history. So if you want to interchange them, put Stone Crusher 4 and Clans and 3, that's up to you. Right? Again, this is just my opinion. Now, moving into number 2. For me, this is... I don't even think there's a debate for this. I don't know who they even debate this. Right? Now, I know you're thinking, well, Sir P, this sounds like a huge build-up. This sounds like a number one you're going to No, number one, I'm going to catch people off, off guard. Well, get some people off guard. My subscribers are probably have a good idea who may go put a number one already. Right? But number two, 
When you talk about gang gang actual badness, people in the street shoot people left and right. Number two, show up pasty slash presidential click. Right. People, even the US feds admin, over 1400 murders, and this is in the United States. We don't even have a count the people in the presidential click and, and show up as they take out in Jamaica. Just in America alone, over 1400 people. Right. For me, when you talk about actual street gang and the badness in the streets, the numbers don't lie. Like Klansman, like Stonecrusher, you can classify Show Up Posse as one of those organizations like from out of the Middle East, right? We are talking about above gang territory now. We are going to a different level of territory. This is you know, anti gang legislation is strong enough for this, uh, for deal with and for describe what we are talking about. What we are talking about Show Up Posse. Now, of course, you know. Jim Brown, right? You probably would have heard of the, uh, him son Jati. You heard about Dodos. You heard about Liberty. You heard about Chris Royal. That is the Coke Dynasty, right? Vivian Blake was the leader of Show Posse as well, but he wasn't really a bad man in the streets like that, right? So people, West Kingston, you already know, all over America. If you want, there's documentaries out there. There's books out there. Trust me, people. Everybody know about Show Posse. I don't think anybody is surprised. And I, I, I would even put them above clans and stone crusher because people understand this. When you talk about destructive, I'm not even just talking about life, flesh and blood. I'm talking about even things like reputation. I'm talking about things like generation. See, clansman, clansman and one other them gang they set back Spanish town, a generation. Stone crusher, set back Montego Bay and the, sur and the surrounding parishes. At least one generation. They also destroyed the image of those places, right? Because remember one time Spanish town used to be somewhere people aspire for go live in. Who remember that? Who remember one time people used to left town, say them want to go live a Spanish town to get a better life? Who remember those days? <laughs> those days are long gone, right? So your clans and your one other name and them and they destroyed the reputation of Spanish town, right? Stone crusher, them gang they destroyed the reputation of St. James. Well, Show up as destroyed reputation of the entire nation. Show up as destroyed the reputation and the image of Jamaica as a whole. Show up as branded enough Jamaicans yardy to the point that to this day, enough Jamaicans cannot shake off that yardy image. All when time you know about badness, all when time you go foreign to do the most law abiding job there is. There are some people who will forever brand Jamaicans as yardies and as gangsters and as criminals. That right there is the handiwork of the show up assy, right? So people, for me, they had to come even before um, Stone Crusher and your clansman and those organizations. So that's number two. So now you're thinking to yourself, then I want number one. You just name out. Uh, surely it couldn't be. It couldn't be that gang over here and that gang over here. So. One well, number one, I mean, maybe Sir Pierre got talk about one, one old school gang from the 70s and the 80s. No, 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 people. Listen, all those gangs from the 70s and the 80s, your Feather Maps and your Cloudy Massop and your, your Bory Boy, right, and your, your, your Sando Khan and them and them. People, I'm sorry, when I look at the numbers, were they Monday Ladu back then? If, they, if those numbers were happening in Jamaica now, it would be a good year. The amount of people with, with them gang they let take out back then, I mean, it sound bad, what I'm about to say, but I wish we'd go back to those days. I wish we were going back to the days when, when only 400 and 500 people did a year. Because that was the numbers, them gangs, I threw them. Right? People remember, in 1980, 1980 was considered a disaster in Jamaica. People were saying 1980 is, is the worst year in Jamaica's history and we'd never see a year like that again. That is when the politics, the PNP and JLP clash came to a peak. 899 people died that year. People were saying that would be the worst year we'll ever see. Guess what? That would be a good year now. All those gangs back then, the people that said Jamaica mash up and don't fan those gangs, that is the worst thing ever see. Listen, your clans and your stone crush and, and your one other them gangs, eh? I throw down far more people nowadays. People, after 1980, the following year, murder in Jamaica fell to 490 in 81 and 405 in 82 405 people in 1982 right so just looking at the sheer numbers 
you these modern day gangs because they have more money more connections um, they're more mobile they are far more destructive than those old-time gangs right as i said 405 those numbers are un unheard of if we get 405 murders in a year people would celebrate like a zero right so you're asking yourself sir be cool me what you say but who is number one who is the biggest most destructive gang in jamaican history come on people do i even have to tell you the answer to that question is a tie a tie between the pnp and the jlp forget about your clansman and your one order and your stone crusher and your piranha and your rat bat and your rima 13 and your fatherless right and your king's valley go on name any gang you want name any gang you want name these two right here bigger and better than them these two right here are far more destructive than them see unlike the other gangs when these two keep up foolishness nobody can come shell them down see stone crusher for the most part has been annihilated by the government of course members still exist and man over here some man over here so but for the most part mashup clansman has been disorganized thrown all over the place right your rat right, but all these organizations who know one name we should have known one name bulby machine man bone man who know one name tesha miller black man go on tell me name name any down on one none of them no bad like the pnp and the GLP. none of them see because it's these two gangs that really and truly run off all the others all of them gang they own the name architect chat from these two gangs all of them bad man they want to name all of these dance all of those men only tell us why have power and ruler and ruler area and control this these two are their leaders and these two use them and in dash them away when they finish with them like a baby nappy sorry not a nappy a diaper right because when you think about your, your jim browns and you think about your dodos and all these people and they say oh that uh, them man they used to run off Tibalian. No. See, uh, um, Tibalian on uh, 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 a Jim Brown place. Tibali is not Jim Brown place. Tibali is Edward Siaga's place. Edward Siaga is the big man on the sun. Right? We don't talk about, yo, when Feather Map was the done and Bully Boy was done. Really? No. Them did have a done. Michael Manley. That's who was them done. Right? We don't talk about. In Jamaica's entire history, in Jamaica's entire history, none of these so-called organizations has ever even dared to challenge the PNP and the GLP. No matter how much rifle stone pressure one have, no matter how much weapon clansman one have, no matter how much limbs them fling over yourself and then dash the body over yourself, they've never dared to truly test the elite members of these two parties. Remember, so the last time clansman make olivia bobby grange sweat he saw what happened to the leader of the organization the big bad bulby he never even and not even she the man didn't go for him. the man did not even go for bobby right the man didn't go for somebody else but the person was close to bobby and that was enough to get the big bad donovan bobby when it dashed away dash away like when you have a dual cell battery and you know them life now you just dash away right that's how the man named Lily Bulby, just because Babsy Green sweat. Just sweat, she's sweating now. Babsy never bleed. Suppose she did bleed. Just sweat, Babsy sweat. And that was it for Bone Man. Sorry, Bulby. Right. So, no one nobody tell me about them Dan run off here, so. And them gang are the most powerful thing over here, so. And them gang make much money and rule much this and conquer much that. No. You're Dan, your gang, are puppets and pawns, as I said. Agents of the state used to destroy and then toss the side. The ultimate, the ultimate gangs in Jamaica are called PNP and JLP. And no matter how much man you want to have in a your local gang in your corner, any day you make any of these two gangs feel like say, they no longer need your services or they found a replacement for you, they will get rid of you. 
and there is nothing you can do about it except lock up in your cell and ball or go with your spot down a dove cut. These two organizations are the biggest and most destructive gangs in Jamaican history. Now, let me put this out here before I end the video. I am not anti-politics. I am anti politics See, I believe that it's only going to be solid politicians, competent politicians, competition, sorry, politicians with vision and leadership who are going to help change this country. I'm not anti-politicians. I'm anti-corrupt politicians. I'm anti-useless politicians. I'm anti-crooked politicians. So if there's anybody always listening to this right now who think to themselves, John, oh, so sorry for yourself. Oh. No, the, no, listen. If you have good intentions for this country, and you think you can help make a change in this country, I would encourage you to get into politics, right? It's going to be hard getting out some of those corrupt dinosaurs, right? It's going to be hard, and I would encourage you to have your own money. That way, it's, it's harder for people to buy you out, because when you're broke and going to politics, you need money for running a campaign, and you, you might end up switch on your values, right? Because you want campaign money, so I would encourage people to at least make sure there's food up on your table. You don't want to go into politics hungry, trust me, right? So I'm not anti-politics. Uh, I would love it if um, more honest, competent people got involved in politics, right? But as it stands, and even now, there's some decent politicians out there, some, right? A few, right? I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't generalize and say every politician that thief, but most, most are, right? I'm, I'm just being honest, right? Even though one of them look clean, sometimes when they really run them file, they get for final side, they move your side, give them money, this and them a link with them money, and I say really, but I thought he was a new breed, I thought he was a new batch. Right, so people, that's it for me. Number one on the list, the biggest, most destructive gang in Jamaica. Right, I know this video is going to offend a few people, but when when do I not offend at least one person? That's become normal now. Anyway, Patreon squad, big up on yourself. Please like, comment, and share the video. Bless.